Greetings, friends around the world. My name is Alexander Sarsovedic, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Bible News Prophecy Program. In fact, we have been noticing the increased presence of aliens uh, in various movies and various programs, increased so-called aliens, of course, and many are convinced, indeed, they're aliens from outer space. There's one report in which we read that even more Americans seem to believe in aliens than in Jesus Christ. In fact, it was, it was a survey at uh, National Geographic. So, according to a National Geographic survey, 77% of Americans believe, I'm quoting what they believe, they believe that there are signs that aliens have visited Earth. And according to a recent Harris poll, only 68% of all Americans believe that Jesus is God or the Son of God. So when we calculate all of that and all the results of that survey, that means that the number of Americans that believe that UFO, unidentifying, unidentified flying objects, have visited us is now greater than the number of Americans that believe what the Bible has to say about Jesus Christ. Now with each passing year, it seems that the frequency of UFO sightings seems to keep increased, increasing as does the number of movies, television, shows and video games featuring aliens and extraterrestrial life. It is almost as if the population of the planet is being planned for something. At first glance, we may not really know or we may not understand what would that something be. Of course, most Americans do not truly know the Jesus of the Bible, they just know of or they know about him. Now, if aliens mean spirit beings like demons, then, of course, I too believe that they exist because the Bible teaches, like in James chapter 2, verse 19, that those forces do exist. But I do not believe that was the intent of the question in <laughs> the survey that was made some time ago by National Geographic. Now, although the New Testament is clear that Jesus was the Son of God, like in Mark chapter 1, verse 1, many no longer profess to believe the New Testament. You see, the times have changed, the times in which we live. And among of those who do not profess Christianity, is the number of those is increasing exactly in the United States of America. Yet, there is proof outside of Scripture that Jesus Christ existed. And we have secular writers that taught that Jesus existed indeed. From Suetonius, here is a quote from him, he discusses that around 49 AD, the Roman Emperor Claudius banished all Jews from the city of Rome. Uh, this seems to be an incident uh, that is also mentioned in Acts chapter 18 and verse 2. Acts 18 verse 2, he expelled the Jews from Rome on account of the riots in which they were constantly indulging at the instigation of Crestus. Now this is published in The Lives of the Caesars, book 5 and verse 25. But we have the same again incident also mentioned and alluded to in Acts chapter 18 verse 2. Now this Crestus is believed to be a slang and derogatory reference to Christ. Suetonius was not a Christian, and he referred to the Christians as holding to a novel and mischievous superstition. And of the quote, it is published as such in Life of Nero, uh, of Nero. And as cited in the book D.L. Studying the Historical Jesus, A Guide to Sources and Methods, Baker Academics 2005 and page 48. So again, it seems that more Americans do believe in Jesus Christ and that they, in, sorry, that they do believe actually in the aliens that exist rather than believing in Jesus Christ, rather than studying the historical Jesus, rather than studying the Bible to find out what that Jesus Christ kept and what example he left to all of us to keep after his death. Now here are a couple of quotes from the Jewish historian Josephus in the first century. In his Antiquities 18.3.3 or 18.3.3, .3 .3, here is that first quote, 
which says, Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lawful to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ, and when Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, has condemned him to the cross, those that loved him, at the first, did not forsake him. For he appeared to them alive again the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and ten thousand other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct at this at this day. Now here is another quote from the historical writings of Josephus in his Antiquities 20. Dot nine dot one. Quote, but the younger Ananus, who, as we said, received the high priesthood, was of a bold disposition and exceptionally daring. He followed the party of the Sadducees, who are severe in judgment above all the Jews, as we have already shown. As therefore Ananus was of such a disposition, he thought he had a new He had now a good opportunity, as Festus was now dead, and Albinus was still on the road. So he assembled a council of judges and brought before it the brother of Jesus, the so-called Christ, whose name was James, together with some others, and having accused them as lawbreakers, he delivered them over to be stoned. Notice a translation of a Latin quote from the first and early second Roman historian, Cornelius Tacitus in his Annals 15 and 44. Christians, Christus, Christus the founder of the name, was put to death by Pontius Pilate, procurator of Judea in the reign of Tiberius. But the pernicious superstition represent, rep, repressed for a time broke out again, not only through Judea, where the mischief originated, uh, that's Annals of the Tacitus, and uh, it's, uh, it just tells us once again that Jesus Christ was indeed a historical person, and that the Christianity, the, the, the religion that he, that is named after him, that was, that he started that religion, indeed has not been extinct. It does exist, of course, to these times. So, you see, secular sources from those that did not claim to believe in Jesus reported about him. We, on the Bible News Prophecy Program, we do have a book, which you can also find online, uh, which is uh, proof is, you know, Jesus is the Messiah. So, proof Jesus is the Messiah, biblical, prophetic, and historical facts. And... Of course, for more of those historical and scriptural proofs, you need to go to our website, babelnewsprophecy.net. Now, uh, we need to tell you that in this book, indeed, that we have published, and that you can find online, the book, once again, entitled Proof, Jesus is the Messiah, we have indeed, we have given the review of over 200 Hebrew prophecies that were fulfilled by Jesus Christ. Biblical prophecies come from God indeed and should be accepted as undeniable proof of Christ. Let me also add that James O. Usher is physical archaeologist and his physical archaeological evidence that Jesus existed. The first century inscription translated into English states James, son of Joseph, Brother of Jesus. Now, Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God, and also God according to various Christian and professing Christian writers of the second century. And they also taught that he always had existed. In the oldest complete Christian sermon that has (laughs) survived, uh, which that's actually, uh, you know, a a writing from Holmes uh, M.W., The Apostolic Fathers, Greek Texts and English Translation, 2nd Edition, Baker Books, Grand Rapids, 2004, page 102, 
So outside those in the Bible, sometimes erroneously referred to as second letter of Clement, there seems to be support for Binitarianism. It was given perhaps within a year or so of John's death. This may be, uh, may be towards the end of the time of uh, Ephesus and begins with the following, and I'm quoting now the following. Brothers, we ought so to think of Jesus Christ as God, as judge of the living and the dead. And this is an ancient Christian sermon, Second Clement, and uh, is published in the Apostolic Fathers, Greek text and English translations, second edition, Baker Books, Grand Rapids, 2004, and this is on page 107. Now, uh, there was a... Ignatius, who was known by Polycarp and praised in the same Polycarp's epistle, which is known uh, as Polycarp's letter to the Philippians. He wrote to the, uh, around, sometimes around 108 AD. For our God, Jesus Christ, was conceived by Mary in accord with God's plan of the seed of David, it is true, but also of the Holy Spirit. He was born and baptized so that by his submission, he might purify the water, uh, and uh, you know, in, in in parentheses it says Ignatius of Antioch, letter to the Ephesians, eight, uh, comma two. So know that this is translation the same by at least three separate translations, as done by Doctor Lightfoot, uh, J. H. Srolly, and Roberts and Donald Donaldson. Now the very disciple of the of the apostle john and the man who succeeded him and that man is called of course polycarp polycarp of smyrna in the mid second century he wrote the following but may the god and father of our lord jesus christ and jesus christ himself who is in who is the son of god and our everlasting high priest build you up in faith and truth and in all meekness gentleness patience long-suffering, forbearance, and purity. And may he bestow on you a lot and portion among his saints. And on us with you, and on all that are under heaven, who shall believe in our Lord and God Jesus Christ, and in his Father who raised him from the dead. So you can find this as letter to Philippians from Antinicene Fathers, following one, uh, that's the letter of Polycarp, Polycarp of Smyrna to Philippians. So, also we have another writing which says, uh, For whosoever does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in flesh is Antichrist. You see, that's what Polycarp also wrote in, uh, in his letter to Philippians. Him who died for us and for our sakes was raised again by God from the dead. You know, that's what Polycarp wrote about such Christians and about the, their very uh, predecessor and the first very of all Christianity, which is, of course, Jesus Christ. Him who died for us and for our sakes, he was obviously raised by God, of course, from the dead so that he could be approved that he is also the Messiah. And finally, Melito of Sardis wrote that for the deeds done by Jesus Christ at his, after his baptism, and especially his miracles, gave indication and assurance that the world of the deity hidden in his flesh. For being at once both God and perfect man likewise, he concealed the signs of his deity, although he was the true God existing before all ages. Well, again, we have these and other writings that prove to us that Jesus Christ indeed was a historical person that jesus christ did exist and of course we all believe that he died and rose from the dead and 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 and, and conquered the uh death so that we can all live freely in freedom and uh, in abundant life well so much for today dear friends my name is alexander sasha Vedis. this is bible news prophecy program for more information and more analysis on the world events and trends www.biblenewsprophecy.net until next time, goodbye friends.